Welcome to Proven Improbable, where we focus on metals, mining, and more. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Joining us for a conversation is Bob Moriarty, the founder of 321 Gold and 321Energy.com, and the author of two of my personal favorite books, The Art of Peace and Nobody Knows Anything. Mr. Moriarty, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. It's good to talk to you. Always an honor, sir. Bob, you're one of the most coveted, respected names in the natural resource space, so it's an honor to have you here sharing your insights. I would like to begin our conversation with Novo Resources, a company you and I both are shareholders in. Give us a little background on Novo Resources. Well, let's, let's talk about what <clears throat> what ships last happened in the last couple of days. Novo released a, a press release, and they were talking about samples coming back from three of the Trent samples. And and the really interesting thing is that one of them was 15 grams, one of them was 17 grams, and the other was actually above the pay zone, so it's 1.3 grams. And, and all of them were important for different reasons. Now, strange enough, the gold grade in the width overall is around 15 grams. So a 15 gram gold deposit is certainly nothing to be ashamed of uh, if you've got the lateral extent, and that absolutely appears to be the case. Uh, markets go up, markets go down. You've read that in the book. And, and people think that when you've got a really great stock, it can only go up. And that's just absolutely not the case. Rick Rule has said, Every major discovery has at least one 50% decline. And it, it's if you liked it at nine bucks, you have to love it at four bucks. Bob, let me ask you this. Quality yeah. names usually have a sell-off uh, this time of the year from tax law selling. How much of a factor is the tax law selling in this price movement? None. None. So this is strictly from the press release, basically. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the problem is the first results were 67 grams, and that was so extraordinary that anything less than that, everybody was disappointed and said, okay, I don't want to play anymore. Uh, <coughs> they're forgetting the, the Vitz water ram uh, produced 2 billion ounces of gold. Now, there are some specific issues with Western Australia. The gold is very nuggety, which means it's very difficult to measure. <laughs> but in this case, this gold is right at the surface. They go down to 15,000 feet in South Africa, and that's very expensive to do, and it's very dangerous, and it's very difficult. If you can mine 15 gram material at the surface, you can make a lot of money. Yeah, that's certainly nothing to be ashamed about. Uh, that 15 grams is quite commendable. <laughs> You know, when I saw the sell-off yesterday, I saw this as a great buying opportunity, and that's exactly what I did. I bought more shares. Two-fold question for you here. Are you buying Nova Resources at these prices? Why or why not? Uh, I'm not, but the reason I'm not is because I've got a very large position. It's been my largest position for five years, and I don't need to. Uh, strange enough, if somebody's nervous about Novo, a really uh, high potential, low risk stock would be to buy Kirkland Lake because Kirkland Lake owns almost 30% of Novo or has, has options on 30% of Novo. That's a very good point you make there. Can you share with us some other issuers that have your attention at the moment and why? Well, uh, there's there's one that's my favorite energy stock called Jericho Oil, and uh, it, it simply got the best management that I know in the junior resource sector. Uh, it, it's run by a guy who does everything he says he's going to do, and he set the company up that if the price of oil was going down, they would pick up projects that other people walked away from because they couldn't afford them and if the price of oil was going up he would start drilling 
So it's one of those ideal circumstances. It doesn't make any difference if the price of oil is $30 a barrel or $60 a barrel. They keep moving forward. But it's, it's a company I'm really pleased to work with. I love the management. I'm going to do a piece shortly. It's just a great company. I had an opportunity to meet with Jericho Oil in uh, the New Orleans Investment Conference, and you're right, uh, great management and their use of optionality has been uh, just a, a great play at this time. And I'm looking forward to doing an interview with them as well in the very near future, so uh, looking forward to also uh, seeing what you have to say about them. Uh, are there are the, any other issuers that have your attention at the moment? Uh, let, me, let me take a look here. Uh, <clears throat> my number two gold stock behind Novo would have to be Anaconda. Uh, they're up in, in Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. They actually have an existing mine. I think they're producing about uh, 20,000 ounces a year. They have a mine and mill, but they've got a really exciting property in Nova Scotia and, and something that I doubt very seriously if any of your listeners have ever heard about They've got a deposit called a saddle reef, <clears throat> and if you can imagine 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 million years ago, the land being stretched and then being compressed so it looks like an accordion, uh, that's exactly what a saddle reef deposit is, and at the fold of, of the saddle, You've got a low pressure area, so if you've got fluid movement that contains gold, uh, that's where it accumulates. And the beauty of about a saddle reef deposit is you can have 10 or 20 different pay zones within the saddle reef. Now, when these were discovered in Nova Scotia 150 years ago, everybody thought they were vein systems because they looked like vein systems but they always existed in parallel. There were always two vein systems that ran in parallel. And sometime during the 1950s or 1960s in Australia, somebody came up with this concept and said, hey, we should call that a saddle reef deposit. Uh, they have a project called Goldboro in Nova Scotia. It's very high grade. It's gonna be very profitable to mine. And, and it, it's a company that's just been invisible. Now, you and I were talking a few minutes ago. I think we're at an inflection point, and I think that gold and silver are about to go a whole lot higher. You, you've certainly seen it with Bitcoin crashing, which I find very interesting because that's exactly what I predicted two weeks ago. But uh, Bitcoin is crashing, and it certainly was extracting money from the resource market, and it looks to me as if the stock market is going into a runaway boom, which means it's the next thing to crash. Uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of money flow into the resource sector, and I think that resources will do very well in 2018. Now, since we're discussing precious metals, but I do want to go back just for a moment back to Anaconda. I think there, uh, one of my subscribers, uh, Mr. Kevin uh, Dugan here, he shared with me uh, yesterday, actually, we were discussing Anaconda. They're pretty creative in how they're generating revenue. I think they're selling their tailings off to a company in uh, North Carolina and making a, a handsome little profit from there. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Uh, yeah, I, actually, I was aware. Uh, he was the one who introduced me to the company, and I thank him for that. Uh, the interesting thing to me is there are multiple saddle reef deposits in Nova Scotia, and, 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 and you could look everywhere on their website. They never mention the term saddle reef. Now, there are some things you know just because you learn them over time. When people talk about porphyry systems, there's no such thing as small porphyry. They're low-grade deposits, but they can be in the billions of tons. Uh, saddle reef deposits, it's very common to have 10 or 20 uh, different zones of gold. So they can be very high-grade, and they can be very inexpensive to mine underground. So uh, they, uh, one of the things that I've talked to management about is they said, guys, you have to define salary and you have to explain it so investors know what you're talking about. 
It, certainly, when you clarify the ambiguity, you certainly see the value proposition. You mentioned precious metals. What are you buying right now? Silver. How about platinum? You and I were discussing platinum in the past and you saw it as a, a good buying opportunity. How about now? I, I did buy some platinum recently, but um, you know, if you compare the five different metals, you got platinum, palladium, silver, gold, and rhodium. Uh, they, they rotate leadership. Uh, platinum is nearly the highest or, or the largest spread between the price of platinum and the price of gold. In relative terms, platinum's cheap, gold's expensive. In relative terms, silver's cheap, gold's expensive. The difference between platinum and silver is there's not a lot of companies that you can invest in to, to benefit from the price of platinum. You're pretty much stuck with the metal. There's a whole bunch of silver companies and, and some really good silver companies. And I think even though I would rather be buying platinum metal itself, I think the silver companies will, will make the biggest moves. And one of those I think we highlighted last time, which was metallic minerals. And they've had some very, very nice results lately. Oh, just absolutely extraordinary. I, I've been up there to Keno Hill. Uh, that's an area that was discovered over 110 years ago. It was a big, big, big silver area, and it all shut down around 1989, 1990, and Alexco went in there. Well, Alexco was founded by uh, the people at Nova Gold, and Greg Johnson was part of that, and, and Greg took over another company called Monster Mining and changed the name. But they're, they're coming up with some absolutely extraordinary uh, grades. Uh, they had 1.6 meters of 2,800 grams gold. They had surface samples. I'm sorry, that's 2,800 grams silver. They had surface samples up to 12 kilos of gold. Uh, that it, it, it has been a mine in the past. It will be a mine in the future, and it will go into production. You know, for our listeners, uh, if you're aware of the history of metallic minerals, the as you alluded to there, once monster mining, and it just shows you how important it is to have the right people running the ship here, uh, because these weren't the results that we were seeing under the previous management. So kudos to uh, Greg Johnson there for a job well done so far. Yes. Well, how about rhodium? This is one I like. Rhodium is one that you introduced to me uh, over the summer when you and I were in Japan with uh, a site visit with Irving Resources. Again, a proud sponsor and shareholder for that company as well. Talk to us about rhodium. Well, rhodium is really interesting because rhodium <clears throat> has pretty much doubled in the last year. Uh, rhodium and palladium have gone up the most. Uh, rhodium it used to be very difficult to buy. It's a byproduct. It's one of the six PGMs. It's a byproduct of nickel and platinum mining. Uh, it's very valuable <coughs> because it melts at a higher temperature than either platinum or palladium. So they use it to coat sterling silver, and they use it in catalytic converters. But uh, you could buy a bared one ounce rhodium bars now. And, and that's quite interesting, but the real benefit is uh, the fact it's gone up so much. And they're very rare. You, I, as I've been in precious metals for about ten years now, and I own rhodium. Uh, but again, as you mentioned, one ounce bars are very hard to come by. Uh, Bob, right. last question for you: What sure. did I forget to ask? Hmm. Ah, I don't think anything. I mean, we can always do another interview in the future. Sounds great. But I want to share this before we close. You know, we referenced your books, The Art of Peace, and Nobody Knows Anything. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for a great read or a time-treasured Christmas gift for a loved one, do what I did. I purchased my three sons each a copy of both books so when they get older, they get ahead of their peers. Bob, give us a brief narrative on both of these books, please. Well, it's interesting that you brought that up. One of the things that's very important for investors to realize is what does a bubble look like and how do you profit from a bubble 
and how do you avoid losing money? I, I was a commodities broker in 1984, and I had a stack a foot high of people who had invested in silver in 1979 and 1980, and every single one of them had increased their investment five to tenfold, and every single one of them lost money because they wouldn't sell. Uh, I've got a whole chapter in the book, and many people have told me it's the best chapter in the book about when to sell. When you buy something, you have to have a plan for selling. There are people who are up 18,000% on Bitcoin, and they refuse to sell. Well, Bitcoin's gone down, uh, it's gone down about 45% in the last week. People had a tremendous opportunity to make money, and they didn't do that. But you need to understand human behavior. You need to understand bubbles. You need to understand uh, mob psychology. You need to understand when to sell. You need to understand there's no such thing as a guru. There's no such thing as an expert, but there are a whole bunch of fools. <laughs> Very well said. And for our listeners, you can order your copy under our education tab on provenandprobable.com. We do not receive any financial consideration for selling or advertising these must-have books for your library, but we certainly have benefited financially from applying the axioms in the books. For more information on Bob Moriarty and his work, please visit www.321gold.com and www.321energy.com. And last but not least, please visit our website, www.provenandprobable.com, where we interview the most respected names in the natural resource space. You may reach us at contact at provenandprobable.com. Bob Moriarty, the founder of 321 Gold and 321 Energy, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.